weight cut. Hey, my cyber babies, it's Mother Love right here on the YouTube channel with the Mother Love Show. In studio with me is the very talented, and I mean talented, Donnie Most. We know you from Happy Days. It's good to see you again. What's Great been to see happening? You. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> I've been uh, venturing back to my first love, as I like to call it, which was uh, singing. Before I was ever acting, I was singing when I was 15, 14 years old in the Catskill Mountains and up in the night. Well, isn't there. that against the law? Having uh, a teenager up in the Catskill. In the nightclubs, yeah. And probably, I don't know, it would be now. It, I would, no, it <laughs> was then too. It was then too. It I wasn't prohibition. You were, you were born after <laughs> prohibition. But so, yeah, I was singing what, I loved all the great jazz standards and swing and, and uh, the great American songbook. And I decided uh, if there was any, ever a time to go back to doing that, this is it. Because that music has come back into favor to a and, large degree. You know what, you know? For, for the most part, it really has never gone out of style. Because yeah. you hear the music in movies, you hear them on commercials. Yeah. What's funny is the young kids, now this is music that my parents grew, our parents grew up on, yep. and then we grew to love. I mean, because we woke up listening to Nat King Cole and Ella Fitzgerald and yep. Pearl Bailey and, you know, Lionel Hampton, all these great musicians and what have you. Oh, man, yes. <laughs> and we would have the, just the best music, and it just never, once it gets in you, it doesn't get out. That's the way I feel, and it started for me when I was like nine, and, and it never left. And, I mean, I love all kinds of music. When I was growing up in the... Uh, teenager in the 60s and there was this incredible renaissance going on in music, you know, in the rock mixing with blues and mixing with folk and, and R&B and yeah, everybody everything. was like, I mean, I remember laying out and being the only chocolate person at a Pink Floyd concert <laughs> and I had a blast and they were like, well, I didn't know people, I didn't know black people like rock music. I was like, I'm not a black people. <laughs> Burnt Sienna, so I can <laughs> like Pink Floyd, yeah. and I love Iron Butterfly, and I love Chopin. Yeah. Because when you're when you're a lover of music, do you appreciate all of it? Uh, yeah, if it, good music is good music, mm -hmm. and 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 that was the thing about that time. There was such a, a you know blending of different styles, mm -hmm. and it was that's why I think it was a Renaissance period. It was wonderful, but the music that I still. Um, was in my blood that it, I would want to sing and perform was the with the great standards and 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 I decided I'm going to do this. So two and a half years ago, I started doing live shows and jazz. Did clubs. that shock people when here, here comes Donnie Mose, here comes Ralph Mouth from Happy Days, and we're going to introduce him and he's going to sing swing? Did they? It, it definitely it surprised a lot of people. What was that sound like? What was that? It, it, you know, people say, "Oh, it's it's easy for you because they'll know you. You'll be able to get people to come." Not necessarily because they'll go. They they, they don't know that I could really do this kind of music. So so they think whatever they're thinking. You almost have to get past that hurdle to prove that you can do this. So it's was it's, it like starting over in a different part of your career? Yeah, because to some degree, it was. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I did have some advantages, but it, in many ways, it was like starting from scratch. It wasn't as easy as people would think it is. Exactly. This business is not an easy business, whether you're in front of the camera or behind the camera. Absolutely. And I think people behind the camera have a longer shelf life than those of us in front of the camera. <laughs> right, I think and so. speaking of being behind the camera, you're into directing as well. Yeah, and I mean, how many hats do you wear? Are you part Jamaican or something? You got like 15 <laughs> jobs. You sing, you act, you write, you direct. What do you do? You got 35 jobs. Well, I'm, I haven't directed in a while. I've done three um, independent films and wonderful experiences, and I'm trying to get some other ones going now, too. So, it, you know, it's like juggling. Which am I going to do? Am I going to do the singing? Mm -hmm. Am I going to act? Am I, I was just on The Odd Couple on Monday night and uh, independent That's film. That's a silly show. <laughs> I, yeah, I had only seen it a little bit, but I had a good time. Mm -hmm. It was sort of a tribute. It was a tribute to, to Gary, Gary Marshall. Gary Marshall. That was so classy that they yeah, did that. Yeah, so that was really nice. But um, um, yeah, I'm still acting, and and I'm going to be doing. I hope to be doing all three. We'll see what happens. You know? So you, that's a good thing. You're a good looking actor because you sound crazy in the studio <laughs> with me is Donnie Mose. He part Jamaican. Don't let him fool you. He got 15 jobs, and we'll be back after this break. We'll be back. <laughs> Where she came from. That's great. <laughs>